Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Supply, and we're going to have a great time making one of the coolest pair of wristbands I've ever seen. In fact, I had forgotten about this design. I made these years ago, but I love them. Big points. First off, very simple project. Inexpensive, all kinds of ways we can decorate, and we'll talk about that. But here's the biggest point, support for our wrist. These are highly useful for those of us who are blacksmiths, sword handlers, weightlifters. That's some good support on our wrist, and it looks good too. That, that's a big point. All right, anything I use in this video, weaverleathersupply.com or check below. We've got links there, gonna take you straight to our website. Now, one more point and we'll move forward. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't, subscribe for us. But also, if you wanna know when our videos release, just hit your notifications. You'll know exactly when those come out. Okay, that's out of the way. Let's step over here, look at our pattern. Right off the bat, Please excuse me, I've got a scrape from a piece of firewood and uh, the Band-Aid is not much of an improvement. All right, so on our pattern, this is gonna look complicated. It really isn't. We're just cutting these three pieces. Now let's start right here. We've got a digital pick, we'll jump to that, but let's start here for our measurement. On my wrist, I've got a seven inch circumference there. I'm gonna back off one half inch. Give me a little room right here. So therefore, our main body length is gonna be six and a half long. So let's jump over to our digital pick. So six and a half long by two and a quarter wide. Simply four rivet holes and two oblongs. We're gonna cut two, one for each wrist. On our strap, 11 inches long, one and a half inch wide. We're gonna cut four there. And our buckle billet, again, we're cutting four, half inch by two and a quarter inch. So, couple of notes here. First off, I'm not really big on half inch straps. I tend to go no less than five eighths of an inch. But with two here, we've got one inch there. So that's gonna give us plenty of strength. Secondly, these straps are gonna circle through our oblong. Now, I've got a two and a quarter inch width here. I don't wanna to go too much more because these need to be comfortable. But all told, there's really no outward force on either of these oblongs, so I'm not really worried about this. Now, the first time I saw these, and I'm not kidding, about 30 years ago, these were cut as a single piece. That is difficult to do. So let's just bust our billets and our straps off. Makes the whole thing very easy and very efficient. Now, last point, we can go all kinds of ways here. We can add decoration, multiple colors. There's some of our reptile. So there's some cool ways to really dress these up. All right, we've got a feel for our pattern. Let's step over to our main table, start cutting some leather. I am notorious for picking the darkest possible color for our projects, but all told black, timeless classic for this pair of wristbands. Now, we've got our Poundo board here. Love this. This is a good cutting surface. Our blade sinks into it, so therefore we get a good clean cut, but also it doesn't trash our blade. But it too is black, so that's not gonna be a big help. We're gonna jump over to our poly cutting board. Now, good trick here. Let's do a little loop of duct tape on the back. So therefore, when we drop this down, Good, it's not gonna move around on us. Same with our Poundo board, that's a great trick. So, on our leather, we're gonna go with our Jasper Chrome Pull-Up. We want something about a four to five ounce. Now, if you're a larger person, five to six maybe. But we want support, but we also need these to be comfortable. So let's start right here. On our main body, we're gonna cut two of these. Now, the camera's not gonna pick up our marks, but easy enough to see here. So let's drop these in. Let's go ahead and add our marks for our oblong and our rivets, and let's cut two of these out. Easy enough there. Let's add some round corners so these corners don't poke us on our wrist. All we have to do here, let's cut a, cut a corner, clip a corner off, about a quarter inch either direction. Now I'm gonna clip those two small points off. There we go, so not a perfect round corner, but good enough. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other corners. Those are set, looks good, ready, and marked. Okay, let's jump over to our straps. So we've got an 11 and a two and a quarter. So let's just cut a strap at 14 inches, then we'll bust our billets off of the end. Now, the easiest way to do this is I'm gonna make my mark with my knife blade. That's gonna give me a very accurate mark. So let's drop in our square. We need four of these. 
So let's drop in four cuts right on our half inch mark. Do the same on the other end. Then I'm going to strap these out with my straight edge. Good enough. We've got 11 and two and a quarter, four of each. So let's mark these. We just need two marks on our billets. We need a single mark for our ribbon on our strap and then our size holes. We are marked. Last step. Notice I've clipped this point here. Here's the reason. Very few of us are going to have a one half inch English point. So therefore, if we just clip a point, that's going to slide right through our, our oblongs. So let's just clip each of these four pieces. Well, easy enough. Let's step over to our punch table, drop in our oblong, rivet holes. We're close to being done with this project. Couple of notes before we get rolling. I mentioned a while ago that we may not have a half inch English point in our shop. Well, if we don't, then the same may be true for our round end and our oblong. We can get around all three tools. Now, tools best way to go. Cleanest, fastest, and most accurate. But if we don't have an oblong, half inch, what we can do is cut, is punch two round holes and simply cut between them. Makes a fine oblong. And when we bend that over, we'll never see that we cut that by hand. Secondly, we can always go with a simple slit. But what I would suggest here is let's drop in two round holes on either end of that so it doesn't tear further. On our round end, tool, again, best way to go, but if we don't have the tool, we can simply cut two corners and that's going to that's gonna look fine. We'll never see that. So we can get around both tools. Now, let's start right here. So on our small billets, we're going to drop in a round end on either end, an oblong in the middle, and for our punch holes, for our rivet holes, I'm going to go with about the second from the bottom tube. That's going to keep our rivet snug in that hole. So let's punch all four of these. And our round holes are in, so let's do a round in, half inch, both ends. We've got those done. Very professional, looks good. Now let's do a half inch oblong right in the middle of all four. Dealing with black and small pieces, this can be a little bit tough, but you know what? It's well worth it. So let's step over to our larger straps. We're gonna do a round hole on only one end and then we're, we'll use our second tube from the bottom for our rivet hole and our size holes. And those are set. Now one point here. We're cutting these very long. When you figure out the, the distance or the circumference of your wrist, you can trim these down to whatever size you need. So those are set and ready to go. Jump over to our body. Now on this, we're going to have round hole on the outside four, and then our oblong on these two marks. Now, when we punch our oblongs, let's turn these to where our oblong marks, let's see if we can see those. Yeah, they're right there. I want those towards me simply so that when I drop, up, drop my oblong in, I can center it on this hole. Okay, those look good. I'm going to reset here. We're going to knock these beautiful wristbands together. At Weaver, we have got all kinds of sizes and styles of buckles. Where I'm going with that is this. We're going to go with a center bar buckle. It's got the bar in the center. It creates its own keeper. I like a lower profile buckle, like say this roller buckle. The problem is we now have to make a keeper. That's going to be tough to do to make a very small keeper that looks good. So we'll go with a little higher profile, but at the same time, as our wrists move back and forth, I'm a little worried that a keeper might catch where this is going to be no problem. Okay, so enough there. Let's jump over. We're going to go with the small double cap rivet or the one quarter inch. So let's take one of our billets. I'm going to drop my buckle in. There we go. Let's come in from the bottom. 
Going to run that through. Notice I'm on the end with my oblongs. My buckles are going to go on the same end as our oblong punches. So now let's bring that back around. I'm right-handed, but we'll see what we got going here. There we are. Let's drop in a rivet cap. There we go. Now we can see that. So we're going to set that so it's more even with the body since we've got a little higher profile there. So let's take our setter. Two good shots. Very nice. I'm going to do the same thing to the other three rivets and buckles. Now we could always let our loop hang off the edge of our quartz or our marble. Makes it a little bit easier. Okay, so those are set and ready. On the other end, let's drop in our longer straps. Okay, those look good. Very easy assembly. Let's step back, our, back to our main table. Let's see how we put these on. This Band-Aid is prominent in every shot and it is making me nuts. I apologize for that. Okay, to put these together. Let's take one. We're going to take our straps. Let's come through from the back through our oblong. Now these are going to be a little stiff to start with. They are going to soften up and loosen up nicely with just a little bit of use. So let's pull that through. Now we're going to circle around and let's go through our buckle. There we go. Looks good. Now, one point. I would like these tabs sticking back. So if you think about it, the end of our strap is going to come through our buckle towards our oblong. So therefore, if we drop these on our wrist like this, our tabs are going to be facing backwards. So let's put these on, see how they look. Well, I could not be happier with the way these have come out. Those look good. Now, two points. Once we get our size down, we can always shave some of the holes on the inside of our straps on our pattern, but also we can clip off these points. But really, the higher profile buckle seems to be no issue at all. Really happy with the way these have come out. What a great project. First off, probably half an hour, an hour at most to make a pair. Secondly, very inexpensive. They look great, all kinds of ways we can decorate these, but the biggest point, extremely useful. I hope every pair of wristbands you make is spot on beautiful. Good luck with your projects. <music>